Don Wineland is here with us today at the Peabody Public Library. This is October 22nd, uh, 2009, for the uh, Whitley County uh, Oral History Project. And I'm John Pontius, and uh, thank you, Don, for coming in today. Glad to be here. Um, were you uh, born and raised in Whitley County? I was born um, at home uh, in Burn Creek Township, a little mm -hmm. house on uh, 250 East, and uh, it uh, was attended by a, a midwife at that time, back in those days, mm -hmm. um, in 1934. Uh, is this house uh, still there? No. Um, I always thought they'd keep it, but uh, they tore it down and put up a modular there, so okay. it's not there anymore. But it was just down the road from my grandparents' home, um, uh, a big a brick home, and it's still there. And uh, who were they? Uh, my grandfather was George Braddock. Mm -hmm. and grandmother was Frances Braddock. My great grandfather built the brick home, and uh, his name was Elijah Braddock. And is that still there? The brick home is still there. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just was passed it the other day, and they've added some onto it a little bit. Okay. But, uh, but uh, I remember the the brick home um, had real high ceilings and uh, a banister that I used to slide down until I got caught, okay. <laughs> and that ended. <laughs> so, uh, where did you go to school? I started uh, at Thorn Creek School, the old Thorn Creek School, uh, through the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then during the Second World War, uh, uh, we moved into Columbia City. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> help was kind of hard to get around at the retail stores. And uh, Kenneth Nichols was the manager of the Kroger store in Columbia City at that time, mm -hmm. which happened to be downtown on West Van Buren Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, he hired my mother to come to work at the Kroger store and moved us into town. Okay. So that's how I moved from from uh, Thornbury Township into Columbia City. You know. And uh, then you went to high school there? And went to high school at uh, the old Columbia City High School mm -hmm. and uh, um, graduated in 1953. So. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, <coughs> uh, high school back in the early 50s. Um, do you remember a little restaurant there in the alley? Um, uh, yes, um, under several ownerships, but um, Colby Armstrong, I think, was the original started that. And uh, I remember we used to go over there at, at uh, noon, at least. And, and uh, That's where you would eat your lunch, uh, um, kids? Well, Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> if you had any money, <laughs> so, okay. uh, yeah. But uh, I do remember that uh, restaurant, and then it was uh, purchased by some other people, and Kobe Armstrong moved on. But uh, what happened to that restaurant, John? I can't really answer that question. Too. It's not there anymore, is it? You know, I haven't been down that alley to tell you. <laughs> okay. The restaurant in there, I don't know if the building's still there or not. Okay. So. Um, do you remember? Do you remember the barrel on the north side of town? The beer barrel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, that uh, was almost that was about the end of town at that time. Uh huh. And uh, the it, beer barrel, yeah. Is it still there? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> um, who was the principal when you were in high school? Uh, Max Gandy. Um, okay. And, a lot of people remember Max Candy. Why? Uh, well, he was strict. Oh. You, you didn't want to be called down to Max Candy's office. Okay. And I only had that happen once. So. Okay. Uh, was uh, was he fair? You think? Uh, oh yes. Uh, yeah, he was fair, and but uh, um, I think we need more Max Candies today. Okay. So. Um. Any other teachers that um, stand out in your memory? Uh, oh yeah, um, one of my favorite teachers was uh, Bernice Carver, and um, 
she lived right next door to us, really, and when we moved into Dallas. But um, what was she like? She was a, a very good teacher, um, but uh, you didn't uh, uh, mess around in her class. You studied, and you got. She taught math, and uh, but uh, she was one of the best teachers that I that I can remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one would be uh, like uh, Abe Devol, Horace Devol. We always called him Abe. Mm -hmm. But uh, he taught a health class. Feel like phys ed? Did he teach? Yeah, too? physical education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where? Uh, so you did have phys ed class. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Did you ever go uh, down to uh, what is now the Wall Field uh, for that? How, how did you get there? We walked. And how, where did you go? We walked down through the alley from the old school, uh, through the tunnel. Through the tunnel that went under the road. Right, out to the... To the city park. <laughs> right, out to Gadlock like Park, yeah. And uh, of course that park was uh, well known. Uh, we. That was the only park in Club City at that time, but uh, uh, winter time, why you slid down the hill on your sleds, and uh, mm -hmm. there would be lots of kids there, and older people too, mm -hmm. enjoying that park. But uh, that was the park that's named DeVoe Field after Abe DeVoe, because he was the one that uh, uh, really developed that park. Okay. You said Mr. Gandy was strict. Uh, if someone got in trouble, uh, what kind of punishment do you suppose they got back then? I don't remember him using the paddle, okay. but uh, you would probably uh, have some other punishment of some kind, and I can't remember what okay. what they was at that time. Um, paddle was used back in those days, and. Uh, okay. And you didn't go home and tell your parents that you got paddled because you'd probably get paddled again. So, but, uh. so uh, after school, uh, what uh, what are some of the things you uh, did for fun okay. around town? Well, uh, when we first moved to Columbia City, I was just in the fourth grade, and uh, and after school, why I would have to report to the old Kroger store where my mother was working. And where was that? That was uh, in the 200 block of uh, West Van Buren, on the north side. Um, what uh, What is there uh, now where that used to be? I don't know. That's, uh, it was the uh, Schultz, Schultz's Dime Store was in that block. And then okay. just east of that was the Gamble Store uh, what was Schultz's then is now Paul Furniture. So the building is, really, is still yeah, there? Yeah, the, the building is still yeah. there. And then the Gamble store and then the Kroger store was, was in that, that area. And so why did you go to the Kroger store? Well, uh, that's, since I was so young then, why uh, they, I would go there and uh, they would kind of watch after me, but they more or less put me to work in the back room. Mm -hmm. um, potatoes used to come in a hundred pound bag and they would dump them into a bin and uh, my job was to put them into 15 pound bags and uh, got paid for it so that's they kept me busy so that I didn't get in trouble mm -hmm. in uh, later years why uh, we got to doing other things after school but keep them busy mm -hmm. so uh what did, what did you do for uh, fun yeah, when you were growing up in Columbia City? Did you kind of walk around town and, and with other kids? Oh yeah, um, bicycle. Uh, you know, you okay. used to traffic wasn't like it is today. And you used to bike all over town. You know, and okay. uh, or I remember uh, used to even play uh, hide and go seek. The city limits were the boundaries. Okay. So, but the parents didn't worry about the kids then um, because the traffic wasn't yeah. nearly what it is today. So, I suppose uh, old settlers' time was kind of fun. Oh yes, mm -hmm. yeah. They had the rides and uh, back then. Yeah, entertainment. Um, 
you started uh, doing whatever you could to make a little money so you could uh, spend it at uh, Old Settlers. Okay. Um, and uh, I suppose, did they have parades back then? Ever? Maybe not at Old Settlers, but at other times? Uh, uh, the only parades I can remember is like uh, Memorial Day okay. or something like that. But uh, I don't remember. They didn't have the uh, American Legion parade like they do today. But uh, that was uh, okay. back in those days, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after high school, uh, what did you do? Um, <clears throat> I went to work. Uh, I was working at a, a service station uh, uh, on South, or South Main Street. And uh, uh, well, I was working there when I was in high school also. And uh, when I graduated, by um, and I was asked to, by the Rex uh, Grable who ran Sinclair Station across the street would work for him and I worked for him for a while and then I was offered a job with uh, Schrader Automotive. Uh, Where was that? That was uh, <coughs> on the uh, on uh, uh, West Van Buren, uh, West Van Buren Line Street um, and it was a Schrader, uh, Schrader had a furniture store um, plus an, an automotive, automotive parts in the back. And I went to work for them as a uh, uh, running the parts business and uh, also doing bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. um, that lasted um, until uh, management uh, the that was a chain outfit and management said they had too much help. So I was the last one there and I was the first one to go. So I walked down to the old Ford garage, Stevens Ford garage. Where was that? Uh, that was on the corner of, uh, uh, trying to think, uh, Market Street and South Main, where the jail is now. Okay. Yeah. And I walked down there and went in and and, uh, and uh, told Dave Spence, who was one of the managers there, that I was looking for a job, and he says, you can start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I went to doing, doing what? Um, working on the grease rack and mm -hmm. plus learning um, how to do balance wheels on cars mm -hmm. and, and that sort of stuff. But uh, I've done that for um, a while and uh, and, uh, and it wasn't too long after that that uh, my friend Graham Claysby and, and myself decided that uh, uh, we should join the, join the Army. Why did you uh, join? In, uh, were people being drafted still back then? Uh, no. Um, uh, right after the Korean War, and um, a lot of service people coming home, and you couldn't really get a, a better job because they were take, taking up their jobs. So we decided we would and join the army. Um, and did you uh, go to Fort Wayne for that, or uh, how did you join up? Oh. I think they had a recruiter here in Columbia City, okay. I believe, came here to start there. Uh, so like where did you go then? Uh, well, uh, we was uh, sent to Indianapolis to, um, by bus uh, to uh, induction center. and. Uh, physical examinations and sworn in, and, uh, and they called both Graham and myself into an office and said we'd done fairly well on our tests, mm -hmm. and was invited to join uh, a division of the service called the Army Security Agency. Uh, it was a fact-finding part of the Army. We'd done research, but we would be going to school for one year. And uh, so we went from there, we went to basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And after basic training and a short leave home, we went to Fort Devens, Massachusetts for specialized training in the, the, uh, what we was to be doing. And uh, uh, then after that, we... What, what were they training you for, uh, for example? 
Um, they was training us in how to take Morse code. Oh. That was the first thing, and uh, then um, uh, we both switched to what they called teletype intercept. Um, what we done in those days uh, was during the Cold Cold War, Cold War era, and we would be intercepting the um, messages and stuff, uh, even commercial messages uh, from our suspected enemies. That all went to what they called a crypt division, and they deciphered it, and they uh, so we knew exactly what our potential enemies at that time was doing. Mm -hmm. um, that division has since been abandoned, but uh, um, we went uh, uh, with a ship to uh, the Far East. Uh, we, by ship, uh, we flew to uh, Seattle, Washington. Um, went out of, uh, shipped out of there on a troop transport to uh, Yokohama, Japan. That I imagine that took a while to get across the A couple of weeks, a <laughs> couple of seasick weeks, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I know we got to um, Japan. We got we docked, pulled into Yokohama Harbor uh, early in the morning, and uh, uh, everybody came through and, and was waking us up. Said we was there, and I know it was quite a shock to be in a foreign country. Not too many years after the end of the Second World War. Um, kind of interesting. Uh, but anyway, they uh, once we uh, was taken to the dock and, uh, and we uh, went by bus into uh, our headquarters in Tokyo, Japan, uh, where we was reassigned to our stations where we'd be working. Um, my friend Graham uh, went to uh, Kyoto, Japan, and I was shipped to the island of Okinawa, or station on the island of Okinawa, where I spent the biggest share of the next two years. Uh, on an island? On an island. In the Pacific? In, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and what did you do there? Well, uh, when I first got there, um, my job was pretty well filled up, so they made me a, a, a staff driver mm -hmm. and got me a, a driver's license, military driver's license, and I, for several months, I drove the officers around and uh, uh, had to be spit and polished and, uh, and uh, neat uniform and drive very carefully. Was uh being there in Okinawa, um, pleasant experience. Uh, the weather was probably nice. Well, it was nice until uh, uh, typhoon time, and <laughs> and I went through uh, several typhoons. And uh, worst one, I think they said the winds got to 170 mile an hour, and uh, that's when it blew the top off the weather shack. So. We don't know how fast it got after that. So you had a safe place to go to. Uh, yeah, there was typhoon type barracks, but uh, since I had a driver's license, we had an operations division that had to be going all the time, and uh, the typhoon would last for several days, and uh, so uh, I would take one of the Army Deuce and a Half trucks and transport the fellows back and forth from the operations division to their typhoon proof barracks, uh, but they had to have a, a steel helmet on and, uh, and goggles and, and watch out for stuff flying through the air, so it wasn't a, wasn't a pleasant experience. Was, uh, so in your <clears throat> off time, what did you do in Okinawa? Uh, <laughs> craft shop, I had a craft shop. Uh, done a lot of sightseeing, a lot of pictures, took a lot of pictures. Um, and we used to uh, uh, get together, a bunch of the fellows get together, and uh, I could check out a, a deuce and a half truck mm -hmm. and 
we'd go down to one of the nice beaches and uh, enjoy a time at the beach. So, okay. So, uh, so uh, what what did you do uh, after the after there after the service? Uh, came back uh, from the city and uh, I initially went to work for the International Harvest Co Harvester Company in there. Branch Garage in Fort Wayne as a service manager apprentice trainee. Um, done that for close to a year. Then I decided to go into business on my own in Columbia City and uh, uh, took over the management of a marathon station here in Columbia City. And where was that? That was on uh, uh, West Van Buren Street. Um, the building is still there, but it's a beauty shop now. Okay. Yeah, and uh, then I was there for um, several years, several years, and then uh, Mrs. Fisher, who had the um, Fisher station across the street, which was more of an old-time convenience store, um, offered to sell that to a gentleman by the name of Dale Gay and myself. And bought that and uh, ran that for several years. So it, it was a service station? Uh, and service station um, uh, slash grocery store. Grocery, yes. And uh, we used to uh, have cold meat, slice off cold meat, you know. Mm -hmm. you might be out greasing a car. Somebody come in with a pound of sliced bologna, you'd go in and wipe your hands off with them and slice off a pound of bologna. And uh, or hand dip an ice cream cone. We was so you kids would come in. And oh yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I done that for several years, and uh, I sold out my interest to uh, Mr. Gay, and uh, went to work delivering milk for the old club dairy. And you would take the milk to house from house to house. House to house, yes. I I. My route was uh, South Whitley, and uh, we, uh, would you put the milk on the front in the, on the front door area? Normally, yeah. Or some homes, you uh, especially if the people weren't working, you just automatically or were, if they had jobs and they was going to work, mm -hmm. you would just take the milk in and put it in the refrigerator. I had a lot of those, but you, you learned which what you talked with different places. <laughs> um, people didn't lock their doors back then. I, I Not suppose. very often, yeah. And uh, um, even in some places, you had keys to the places, you know. Okay. You, so you could get in and put the milk in the refrigerator, and they was gone. So uh, different than it is today. I imagine you had some interesting experiences doing that. Yes, um, <laughs> all the milkmen used to have a lot of stories about dogs and um, and, and uh, other things that happened as a, as a milkman. Uh, so we won't get into all those stories. <laughs> okay. Um, what what did you do after that? Um, after that, I, I uh, bought out a uh, service station on uh, North Line Street. Um, uh, on the, at where on North Line Street? Uh, I was on North Line and North Street, right on the corner there. Is that a uh, building still there? No. Uh, it, it was originally a grocery store, a big building, and uh, um, it had been converted into a gas station. And we, uh, uh, and I started selling uh, park with lawnmowers and uh, sold paint and uh, ran that until we actually uh, had a fire and uh, burnt the place down. I uh, remodeled it back into a big self-service gas station. Self-service was just starting then, self-service gas stations. And we remodeled it back into a big self-service gas station. And uh, had that for several years, and sold that to CNC Oil Company out of Huntington, and built the 
new building out in the old truck stop area and moved the power equipment part out there. So, and uh, kept adding on and adding on. And, and we became a pretty good sized lawnmower dealer for the Northern Indiana. Okay. So, so uh, and then you, uh, that was probably one of the last things you did? Uh, I, no, I, I kind of got burnt out of being in business in uh, 1989. I sold the business and went to work as territory manager okay. for a company called Stens Corporation. And uh, I was manager of their, uh, there was a, a parts distributor and I, uh, my territory was the state of Indiana and Ohio. And so I traveled for uh, about 12 and a half years until retirement. Okay. Let's talk about some of the, some of the people in uh, Columbia City. Uh, and can you think of uh, some of the memorable people? Uh, I don't know why you were there. Oh, yeah. Uh, we mentioned about the uh, Fisher Station. Uh, there was uh, one, uh, one of the Fisher brothers was name was Clifford, but they always knew him as Bosco Fisher. He was one of the characters around town. And uh, um, why was he a character? <laughs> well, he just uh, never really cared about too much, and uh, just kind of done his own thing what he wanted to. And um, um, and then there was several from the. Old uh, county farm, a uh, guy by the name of Farmer Hass. Uh, he was one of the characters around town and uh, just was kind of a different type of person. So, but uh, that's two that I can think of right offhand. How about uh, some of the mayors of uh, Columbia City? Uh, do you remember? Yes, uh, probably the first mayor I remember was uh, Ed Binder. Um, and uh, I used to mow his yard uh, when I was a kid. There. What, what was he like? Um, pretty quiet individual, easygoing, and uh, um, that was probably the first mayor that I can remember. Then I remember Ike Weber was mayor. Being a young boy, I didn't really care too much about right. them, them back then. Um, I've known all the mayors since then, but I uh, can't even really think of who all they are or were besides. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Tagmeyer was a mayor for years. And, uh, so what are some of the, uh, as you, during the time that you were uh, working and had a business in Columbia City, uh, what, uh, what did you do uh, after work? Your family? <laughs> Uh, back in the working days, you probably you know you worked uh, more than eight hours a day. But being mm -hmm. business, you were probably working 12, 14 hours a day. And, and uh, but uh, um, we uh, raised a family. I uh, had four daughters, and uh, originally had a home in Westgate Edition. And uh, I was, and I sold that. I can't remember the year. I sold that home, and uh, the, the uh, addition north of town, um, New River Estates, was just starting up. And I actually had the built the second home that was built in that addition. John White other Jr. built the first home, and um, when I bought my lot next to him, they didn't even have a road to it yet. They, this was uh, perhaps a couple a mile or so north of town? Right, right, about a mile north of town. In the, kind of the woods? Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, on Highway 9, well, Highway 9. Okay. And uh, a friend of mine from the school days, um, gentleman by the name of uh, Doyle Johnson uh, had became an architect 
and I contacted him and he designed the home for us and, um, and then he actually done the contracting and subcontracted things out to have the home built. It's uh, still there, <laughs> nice home. But then, then you eventually ended up in uh, at Tri Lakes. Yeah, um, I uh, sold that. I bought a bought a place at Tri Lakes um, to have as a place for the kids to go swimming, and um, somehow the word got and I started remodeling the place. Somehow the word got around that I was going to sell my home in Blue River Estates, which I didn't have any intention of doing at that time. But uh, there was a new attorney coming to Columbia City, and uh, uh, they contacted me and wanted to know if they'd like to look at my home because they're interested in buying it. I had primarily always been in sales, and when you're in sales, when you got a buyer, it's a time to sell. And uh, so I had a couple real estate agents come and look at it and give me an appraisal of what I should sell it for. And uh, the people came uh, to look at it one evening and uh, walked through the home and uh, said, uh, it's sold. And I said, well, wait a minute, I'm not ready yet. And they said, well, can you be ready in six months? And I said, well, I suppose so. And they sat down and wrote me out an earnest check. So at that point, I had to get the home at Tri Lakes finished. And that was on uh, Big Cedar? Big Cedar, on Lincoln Road, Big Cedar. Okay. And uh, once again, I went to a friend from the school days who had became a contractor, uh, Jack Stolf. And now, is there a a street or a road named after him? Yes. Uh, well, after his dad. His dad. After his dad. Developed uh, that area. Well, that's why the road was yeah. named after him. And, uh, and uh, so uh, that's. Uh, Has uh, Tri Lakes changed much uh, over the years? And then, now this has you know, been 30 years or so. Since, uh, well, we've been there 30 years, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is the fishing any different? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't see as much fishing going on uh, on Tri Lakes as it used to. Um, the lake I'm on, Big Cedar, uh, they have allowed uh, speed boats, and uh, which I have one, and uh, but uh, you can speed between the hours of one and four in the afternoon. But uh, you see, don't see as much fishing as you used to on the lake. But the lake has changed from the a lot of the just summer homes. Um, now then there's uh, mostly year-round homes around the lake. The, uh, what I've seen in the last 30 years is the small uh, summer homes are being either remodeled into larger homes or being torn down and big, uh, big homes, big square foot homes being uh, probably built. more more homes built in the last 30 years. Oh so, yeah, there used to be some open areas, I mean, where there wasn't any homes built, but there's not any empty lots around there anymore. Uh, if there is, it's just bound down to one or two. But um, um, there's big, big homes, uh, like 6,000 square foot homes being built uh, around the lake. Now, did um, were there ever any really big boats or did any airplanes ever land on the lake or anything unusual? Um, way back before uh, before you moved out there, but when I was just a, a young boy away, uh, Dr. Lucky used to have his home on the uh, east end of Big Cedar. Where was he a, a doctor? Uh, Wolf Lake. Wolf Lake, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Lucky Clinic at Wolf Lake. Uh, Which is not too far from Tri Lakes, right, is it? Right, yeah. right. And, uh, but anyway, uh, he used to fly, and um, he had a hangar 
there uh, so he could have his seaplane that he used to take off and stuff for him. But uh, uh, he, now talk about characters, he was a character. Yeah, he was. Like? Uh, uh, done all sorts of things. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you talk about flying and, uh, you know, his airplane. Uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Henry Wall that lived there at, uh, on um, Tri Lakes. And uh, Henry and uh, Dr. Lucky were good friends. And um, both their sons were at Indiana University at the same time. And um, so they was going to fly down to uh, a football game one time. And I remember Henry Wall telling that uh, they got up and Dr. Lucky lost his bearings where he was at. And um, he said to Henry, he said, now I'll fly over towards this, this water tower over here and you look to see what it says on the water tower and we find out where, where we're at. And he said, Dr. Lucky flew right at the water tower and he said, I closed my eyes. He said, we got past him. He said, what did it say? And he says, I don't know. He said, I had my eyes closed. I don't know where we're at. <laughs> But uh, that's the kind of uh, person he was. So. so he would land on the lake. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think eventually the uh, DNR said that they couldn't do that. They, they changed their regulations. Uh, well, there once was a fish hatchery at Tri Lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, they would uh, raise the fish put in Tri Lakes. Uh, is that what they were doing? Or? Well, for all the lakes around this area. Okay. Um, that was over uh, between Shriner and uh, Round Lake, and uh, they, uh, the building is still there, um, but uh, they had ponds there where they, they, they had, uh, inside they had places where they raised, would hatch the fish, and they had the big ponds out where they would Put them to grow up a little bit before they transferred them to the to the other lakes. So mm -hmm. that was uh, uh, one of the big places around uh, for raising fish. You know, the hatching hatching fish. Uh, it's uh, no longer there. Um, just the building, uh, but okay. uh, it's right close to what is now the uh, Tri Lakes Park. So and uh, um, were there. Uh, Back then, uh, places to eat around Tri Lakes uh, that maybe are no longer there. Um, hardly any are there any longer. But the old one uh, over on uh, Shriner Lake, and uh, it's had several names over the years. But uh, on the south side, yes, Beechwood was. Okay. What it was originally called that I remember was that uh, a restaurant or. Uh, a restaurant and tavern. Restaurant and tavern. Yeah. And that was the only one for years. Okay. And I think it was just recently closed up again. So. Uh, oh, now, uh, were there any other businesses in, uh, around Tri Lakes? The um, grocery store on the uh, north side of Shriner, um, which has been, had many owners over the years, and it's still there. Um, there was a gas station right there close. And on the west end of Shriner uh, was the uh, Chrome grocery store right on Highway right Highway 9 and I uh, can't remember the name of the road, but uh, the day was right there on the corner. Uh, did uh, any of them sell bait? Or, uh... I'm sure the Chrome Grocery okay. store did. They was kind of a, a general store type. Uh, they sold about anything you needed. So, okay. and it was there for years. So. Okay. Back in Columbia City, uh, you were a, a long time uh, member of the church. I've been a member of Grace Lutheran Church for uh, at this point 60 years. Um, I uh, joined 
uh, I have a, a good friend of mine that I was running with when I was a teenager. He was a, uh, a guy named Jim Ferguson, and his parents were members of Grace Lutheran Church. And um, so I started going with them to church and uh, uh, became a member. Uh, was baptized and confirmed and joined Grace Lutheran Church uh, 60 years ago. So I've been a member there ever since. Uh, do you, uh, uh, who are some of the ministers you remember most? Well, Reverend Priestley was a minister that uh, when I joined, and he had been there for, he was there for years. Um, he retired, and there was another gentleman came in who was only there for about a year, and again, remember, Pastor Reasoner was his name. Uh, he didn't fit in with the crowd too well. Uh, what was uh, Reverend Cleesby like? Uh, he was, Reverend Cleesby was one of the, everybody was his friend. Uh, and uh, he, he was, everybody laughed because he was a cigar smoking minister. He, he, he was, really? Oh yeah, he was. <laughs> and, and, Very uh, friendly. And, and he wouldn't hesitate to go into a tavern and have a beer. Uh, okay. So, uh, kind of different from a minister, but, uh, uh, but uh, everybody uh, in town liked him, and uh, and even if they didn't go to church, if you ask people where they, what church they belonged to, they'd always say Grace Lutheran Church, even if they didn't belong, because they knew Reverend Cleesby. But um, um, so that was he was a very well liked, and then from him it was Pastor Reason, who didn't wasn't here very long, and. Uh, now the church is uh, not the same church uh, building. Uh, no, uh, the old sanctuary, the old church had the sanctuary for some reason it was on the second floor, and uh, but we decided to, uh, to tear that down and build a new church. Um, About when was this? I wish I could remember okay. the year. Was there a fire? Uh, no, well, there, before that there was a fire. Okay. Um, it used to have a high steeple on the church. And then uh, that caught fire, and there's a long story about, behind that too. But it caught fire and burned the steeple down. Just the steeple? Just the steeple. Okay. And uh, they got the fire put out, but it burnt that steeple down. Actually, it was the highest point in the city. Uh, that old steeple. It, now this was uh, uh, next to the, across from the library? The yes, library. right, the okay. old library, yeah. Um, and that steeple had burnt down in probably 56 or 57. They replaced it with a shorter steeple. It was struck by lightning and burnt down. <laughs> so they just put kind of a little cap on it. And uh, then, um, that was, yeah, and then in, uh, I was trying to think what year we decided to build the new church, but uh, I got back from the service in 58, so it was around 59 or 60 that I went on the church console, I can't remember the church console, and we, Pastor Reason left, and I served on the what they called the pulpit committee and uh, interviewing ministers and we brought a gentleman here by the name of Clark Hobby, Pastor Clark Hobby. And it was under his tenure that we decided to uh, build a new church. And um, he done all the preliminary work and everything and then um, he left and a gentleman by the name of uh, Pastor Nelson came and he actually done the, uh, led us through the construction of the new, the new sanctuary and stuff. Do you remember uh, any other major fires in Columbia City in, during your life? Yeah, I remember when the 
Uh, the Grant building burned up on the corner of North Street, or not North Street, uh, Line Street and, and uh, West Van Buren. Did it uh, burn down? Uh, was it a yeah. total, a total loss? Total, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was in that building? I think, I don't know, the Squire Jewelry Store was there at the time, or whether they'd moved. Were the dentist? Uh, yeah, the dentist office. Grants were in the back part of the building. Okay. Um, and what, what is there now? It's a vacant lot. Vacant lot, okay. Yeah, yeah, vacant lot. Another major fire that I can remember was uh, the old McClellan School on the south side part of town. Okay. And that burnt clear to the ground. What, what street would that be on? Uh, Hannah Street. Okay. And was that, um, about what year was that, you suppose? Uh, were you in school, or were you, it was after you were in school? Yeah, it was after. Yeah, okay, was after. and it just burned down. Were there no, no uh, people in it? Uh, no, I, uh, okay. I remember it was a major fire, but I can't remember exactly okay. what it was. But so uh, they never used again there? No, it wasn't. Okay. You know, yeah, they, in fact, I think it's a housing addition now, that ground there, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it was, yeah, that was, uh, Great school for the kids on the South Park town. Yeah. So. Let's see. Were there any other fires? Uh, Probably, but I can't think of it right now. I remember the old. There was a major fire in the old Worcester building on the uh, South Main Street, 100 block of South Main, right across the courthouse. But I can't remember what year that was. That would have been, I would have been really young when that one was. Um, let's see, seems to me a uh, factory burn. Oh yeah, uh, the old uh, Woodley Products on South Line Street, uh, about where the uh, recycling center is today. Uh, so it's no longer there? No longer there. Uh, they, after it burnt and a young man that I knew very well uh, lost his life in that fire, and Paul Walker. And he was uh, an employee in the employee, factory. Yeah. Got out, went back in to get his tools that he used, and didn't make it back out. So, uh, then they they reopened that factory in Pearson. So that was the end of that one here. This was probably when maybe you were uh, just out of high school? Maybe? Yeah, that had to have been around 59 or 60, somewhere in them, them years, when that, when that burned out. So, yeah, that was a major fire, and uh, especially with Paul Walker losing his life. And, uh, and his brother, Bob, became the famous mayor. So Bob, Bob, Bob Walker. Walker, yeah. Mm -hmm. So are there, uh, I, I know you are full of stories about <laughs> local people and, and things that happen. And, and can you uh, think of any other uh, things that went on in Columbia City? Uh, oh boy, I can't really think of any right now, but uh, <laughs> something Sometimes things jogged my memory yeah. that I can. <laughs> um, it, it was life um, any better, say, in the 50s, uh, in some ways, maybe, than now? Uh, I would say so. Uh, it wasn't as uh, tense back then. Uh, you know, uh, things were slower, slower pace of life. Uh, but, um, they, uh, they did have TV back in the early 50s, didn't they? Oh yeah, but um, the TVs weren't really too good. Uh, I can remember uh, the first TV uh, I, I ever seen was, uh, um, was real snowy, you know, mm -hmm. you could hardly make out the picture. 
And um, I remember I bought uh, before, but I was still living at home with my mother. Uh, I purchased a TV from uh, W. A. Jones, Steve Jones. Uh, it was a big TV sales place in Columbus City. Where was that? Uh, it was on uh, South um, uh, South Main Street, uh, right across the old Fort Garage, and uh, right in close to where Riggs Car Agency is there. And uh, but uh, black and white TV didn't have color back then, and uh, and that was the first TV that uh, we owned. And uh, no. Wasn't there a bowling alley? Isn't there a bowling alley close to, close there on uh, Main Street? There on South Main, yeah. Uh, was there? Was that there, like, 40, 50 years ago? Uh, yeah, that was uh, Cooks originally had that bowling alley. The first bowling alley in Columbus City was Schumann's, um, out by the, mm -hmm. uh, on the Baker on Park in that area. Okay, the west side of town. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, did many people uh, go bowling? Uh, well, that was one of the major uh, things to do back then, uh, and uh, then they had that one, and uh, then uh, the Cooks built that converted uh, what used to be a um, car dealership, Packard. They had Packard, they sold Packard cars in that area, and uh, they converted it to uh, a bowling alley then, and uh, which is still there today. And I suppose like you could get a drink there uh, in the bowling alley at that time, or it was just mostly bowling? Yeah, it was just bowling. There was a tavern right next door to it, okay. which I think it's been kind of incorporated into the bowling alley now. I, I believe it's all kind of one building now. Okay. And it used to be Rhodes' Tavern, it used to be there on the corner. Rhodes' Tavern, has it there a long time? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. When uh, uh, they used to sell milk, I remember I used to walk up the street, uh, block up the street when I was a kid to get a quart of milk. Uh, but uh, that was kind of unusual for a young boy to go into a tavern to buy a quart of milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose uh, people back then, uh, families, uh, their, their lives were uh, involved with the churches and uh, activities in churches. Uh, they belonged to organizations, uh, yeah. uh, Masonic organizations. Masonic, uh, yeah. Um, the Elks and Eagles, just as you have today. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, Did you ever uh, belong to any of those? I was uh, a member of the Elks for several years, but... Uh, what did you do when you were a member of the Elks? Uh, have regular meetings? Uh, no, just uh, <laughs> uh, social, when you had dances and stuff, where you'd go okay. and enjoy the, that part of it, and that was about it. Uh, I was never much of uh, getting into the um, other activities of the Elks Lodge, so uh, that was the only one I ever ever joined. So. Columbia City was, back then, was uh, probably a very quiet, wholesome place to live uh, compared to maybe Fort Wayne and other, and other places. Uh, yes, uh, kind of a nice place uh, to live, uh, but you still had Fort Wayne close enough that you could uh, go to the Bigger stuff and bigger activities and stuff. So, so like what? Um, movies. Movies mainly. I mean, if you uh, uh, in your dating years, if you had a girlfriend, you took her to Fort Wayne to the movie, and uh, that was that was a date. So. No, they they did have dances in high school. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Like for example, they had the uh, junior senior prom when you were in high school, did they? Yes. In fact, uh, the class that uh, my graduating class, we when we was juniors, we held the first all night prom that was held in Columbia City. All night. All night. Yeah. Uh, 
started with the um, the uh, uh, dinner at the American Legion home, and then a dance, and then they, uh, the old Columbia Theater had a, um, a movie, uh, a premiere movie for us to watch, okay. and then from then was to uh, I think the Elks Lodge, if I remember, had something going on, and uh, but they kept us busy all night. Who organized this? And uh, people in the parents and people in town? Uh, uh, yeah, um, I can't really remember how it came okay. about, but uh, why? Why do you suppose they made an all night thing out of it? So that the kids wouldn't be running around all night, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> okay. and taking off doing this and the other things, and that was okay. primarily the reason. But uh, but that's uh, it was in uh, probably 1952 because I graduated in '53, so it would have been either '51 or '52 when it was the first all night prom, okay. and that went on for several years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's that way today, though. So. Okay. But uh, that was my graduating class in 1953 when uh, we started that. Okay. Know. Well, Don, um, thank you very much for uh, your interesting stories okay. and sharing your life. Glad to um, help you out here. And uh, Good. I wish I could think some more of the old stories, but uh, some of them will. Uh, things will jog my memory and I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, okay, okay. thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm.